The planet Earth is a ball, it's basically a sphere. Uh, this map is like a, like a flat area, so how they project that ball onto your flat paper, on your, onto your flat uh, a map, two-dimensional thing. This is basically the, what they call the projection system here. Yes, there are different ways of projecting maps. I mean, projecting the sphere, uh, the circle of the Earth onto a flat surface. Next one. Yeah, we do. Oh, good. More questions coming. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, the distance between one degree is given as thousand meters. Uh, no, no, it's not a degree, it's actually, degrees are five, so this is the distance, it's, it's like one minute. Okay. Uh, so the distance between two lines should be one minute according to this map. Uh, the thing is, won't it vary with latitude? The distance between one degree, one minute, won't it vary with latitude actually? Because, I mean, like you said, the Earth is a sphere, and yeah. when we draw the longitudes, it becomes closer and closer as we move towards the pole. So, shouldn't it vary between the top latitude and the bottom latitude? Yeah, but normally, I mean, these uh, minutes and seconds and uh, degrees, these are like fixed fixed distances. Like a minute is going to be actually the definition of a nautical mile, 1,852 meters. So, there's actually something wrong with this map, I think. Because normally, eh, from one minute to the next minute, it's 1,840, sorry, 1,805 meter nautical mile. So here it seems more like almost one kilometer, which, which is a little strange to me. Could could be something to do with the fact that I mean this this projection system is a little different than the usual uh, definition of minutes. But uh, normally minutes are okay, seconds are like 31 meters. A minute is uh, uh, one one point eight kilometers. A degree is one three hundred sixteenth of the of this perimeter of the Earth. Yeah, but the perimeter becomes lower as you go above No, but you're correct, yeah, I mean, the planet Earth spins around, right? It's not a perfect circle, it's more like a bit of a potato, I mean, a bit flattened. So indeed, um, I guess, the, I, I'm not an expert there, but it could be a little bit different, yeah, if you're going closer to the equator, or closer to the poles, where the, the uh, shape of the Earth is a little bit different, uh, there will be some indeed uh, correction there, but again, as far the, as the map is correct, uh, concerned, you would expect that, that the lines are properly put there. This is really one minute or 1.8 kilometer in horizontal distance. Uh, any other questions? Uh, nice, my voice is getting a little dry. Let's go to the next one then. Here again we see a nice contour map, so some of the things so earlier, right, so just like we did at the beginning of the presentation, let's do the same now, let's just indicate the ridges, the valleys and the peaks here, so if you go to the next one, click, so here we can see the peaks, right, to recognize the inner circles, again, it's a little bit bright in the room, so I'm not sure, but these are your inner circle, your high points, you can see that this peak is lower than this peak, but it's still a peak because it's going a little down here before eh, you go to the next peak and here obviously it's, it's very much steep down. Next one, this side of the peak will be drained through this valley. Water falling on this side of the peak will be drained here. Water on, on this side will be uh, kind of exited from the, the mountain range through this valley. And the opposite, opposite of the valley in the next click is the ridges. The ridges are the use. Right, if you go from the base to the peak, the normal use. Right, and U, because at the U, you're at the highest point, going left, going right of the U, will automatically, you will start going down on the slope towards the valley. And left of the slope, bang, you get to this valley. Right of the slope, you get to this valley. So this gives you like a good idea of uh, how to identify ridges, uh, valleys and peaks on this uh, contour map. Okay. Okay, I think we can have a small break maybe. Uh, uh, I would request one thing during the break, maybe we can also, uh, if you don't mind, collect 50 rupees because we have a little bit of expense. I mean, we don't make money at CDC, but we have a little bit of expense with the video and the audio system and some refreshments there. And uh, as I explained, uh, during this fifth birthday kind of uh, events, we kind of also collect 
100 rupees extra, like uh, last uh, November. If I remember correctly, uh, Jace, one of our, I mean, a guy from IIT who joined us on the track, unfortunately drowned in, in one of the dams. So he was the only son there, and uh, we want to support the family a little by collecting 100 rupees, uh, I mean, during these four weeks of birthday event. So if, if maybe one of the guys, maybe Saba or Prabhakar or Rakesh, if you guys can volunteer to just collect 150 rupees, so we can cover the cost and we can contribute something to the family of Chase that would be appreciated. So you can have a refreshment maybe, you can have some biscuits and let us resume again in 5-10 minutes. If you have any questions, you can shoot them. Meanwhile, you want to have you got the smokers, can have a smoke now? <laughs> Just walk a little because sitting again on the floor, you might get cramps by cigarettes like this Google, I've shown a lot of Google Korean maps. We have a precision of 3 seconds, 3 seconds or 90 meters. So any little obstacle, any stream, and any gorge, whatever, any waterfall, smaller than 90 meters, invisible on these maps. So 50% of, of unknown surprises are waiting typically for you in the field. And you might get stuck, even though on the map it looks like a nice low period, you might get stuck. As you know, human being, 5 meter vertical is enough length to block your progress. So 5 meter you're not going to see on this map sometimes. So, but indeed, I mean, map, I mean, this is all theory, theory, theory. Uh, I've done trekking very intensively now for the last five years, almost every weekend we're in jungles, sleeping in jungles, you know, explorations, we don't follow these trails, so we have to get a lot of exposure. And it's, I mean, I'm still learning after, like, having taken 10,000 10, plus people to the jungle, we still learn. Every trek is an adventure because something, will not go as planned, right, either time-wise or water-wise or somebody in the group will get in trouble. So it's always a bit of a challenge indeed. And terrain-wise, map-wise, definitely always something unexpected will be there waiting for you. Which makes it exciting also at the same time. Uh, any other questions in the back? Yeah. Also, I mean, many of the pics that I've shown, like this pic, and, and uh, many of the pics I've I mean, illustrated these maps uh, in that uh, jungle near, uh, to the left side, between uh, Shacklesbourne and Mangalore, is called the Kabinali Reserve for this. I think uh, so. Hassan, Bangalore, Hassan, uh, Shacklesbourne, one hour. Shacklesbourne in the direction of Mangalore, you will come in this jungle. It's along National Highway 48. So as you step out of the bus, you can directly start stepping on the ridge and climb a peak. Uh, so it's in Karnataka, Kerala? Karnataka, not Kerala. A little above Kerala. So, okay, so maps, we have talked a lot about, say, like people say, as you plan your trail, num one number, uh, one key aspect is the, the gradient. We are all human beings, legs are only one meter long, so then we cannot jump like in some uh, cartoons or so, so the slope and the gradients, the distance between the contour lines is essential to plan our trail. Another key parameter will be what I call the density of the vegetation. So if you look at this jungle here, right, this is the same place, Kabinali Reserve for this last year, monsoon mission. So it's, it's quite dense as you can see, it's not, so you can imagine that if I walk from here uh, to back home to Palavakam, I can have it on a flat surface, a human being walks 5 to 6 km per hour average speed, this kind of uh, terrain, your average speed, as we see at the end of the track, typically goes to 2.5 km, maximum 3.5 km per hour. So it gets very dense, <laughs> you can be stuck for one hour just to cover 100 meters into a like, dense and sometimes thorny, thorny jungle. So if you go to the next slide, you can also uh, assess this by looking uh, not at contour maps, but at the satellite maps in Google which will give you again the same picture, same place, but now you kind of see like a photo from the satellite, so again you can easily see the ridges and the peaks, all these grassy places here, little vegetation as I told on top, and as you, as, from, from the ridge, as you start going down, then you can see grass, a bit of vegetation, and as you get really inside the valleys, you can see valleys, water goes there, water means life, life means vegetation, white life, so, dense vegetation inside the uh, valleys. So that's why I was also saying, I mean, this is, you can walk on this ridge <laughs> post monsoon, like say October to Jan, but from February here, if I, if I take you guys on this ridge for one hour, you will all be gone. The sun will be scorching 
on top of you and as you go higher altitude there is less atmosphere so it will be more intense the sun and you don't have water right on top of the ridge there is absolutely not water the water is down there in those valleys so once you're out of water mentally you're going to start suffering and physically dehydration and so on. so i mean in the summer typically on midday like uh, 10 a.m to 3 p.m we try to kind of be close to the streams setting up a camp do it next to the stream you need water to cook to drink and to do your morning duty the next day. Okay, next. Okay, preparing your gears. This will be hoop. We have drew the theory a little bit, the boring map. So now let's take a look at something more fun. I hope this the kids like this a little more. So gears. So what are the kind of gears we use on tracks? Right. Okay, so some people are scared, like I cannot go track because I don't have gears. You don't need much actually. I mean, you don't need to buy a lot of expensive equipment. So here you can see like uh, like a two-day track overnight uh, can be covered with uh, this gears. Uh, one important thing that I want to say, one mistake that many people make who are new to trekking is that they come with these Himalayan-sized backpacks, right? 50 to 70 liters. They stuff it full of luggage. They walk for one hour and they are gone, case. So if you trek in South India, tropical climates, hot, in a lot of dehydration, CTC means no trail, rough terrain, you want to minimize your luggage as much as possible. Anything that you don't need, your makeup kit, your whatever else there, drop it. It's, it's really every hundred gram you're carrying in a tropical climate in the jungle is gone in two days. Continuous trekking is going to weight heavy on you. So minimize your luggage. So I'm going to show you in the next couple of slides what are the things we carry along. Yeah. So for a one day trek, if we don't have to set up a campsite, this is typically what you carry. You don't have to sleep in the jungle. Uh, you don't necessarily have to cook. So basic stuff. I mean, it's nothing different than the city. So light, breathable clothing, right? You want to have ventilated clothing. Typically, we go along the streams, we jump in the waterfalls, and you want to refresh yourself, so you carry one extra dress. Uh, you typically carry like some long pants at least to protect yourself from uh, grass, from bushes, from thorns. Typically, dry fit. Always use dry fit stuff because it dries quickly as you jump in the water. And, like, you don't want to jump with your jeans or you're going to yeah, carry one kilogram extra uh, water that doesn't dry. You can also use shorts to jump into the water. Breathable shoes, very, very important. This, some, sometimes people come with these, uh, what is it there, these woodlands, big closed boots. That's a big mistake. Uh, once water goes inside, again, many times you walk along the riverbed, there will be water there. No matter how any well you walk on those boulders and rocks, you will always slip once in the water. So it's important that you have a breathable shoe with uh, mesh, so that any water that goes in the shoe kind of quickly dries. Uh, it's again a tropical climate, so you don't want to kind of have a close shoe in this kind of uh, hot, hot uh, climate. As I said, no Himalayan bags. Maximum 30 liters is more than enough for a backpack. It's, it's tropical, it's sunny, so you want to carry a, uh, a cap or a towel. The towel is good, you can wet it, you can keep it on top of you to kind of protect yourself from the sun. And then of course, okay, you also need, uh, you're not always going to go walk along the water, so you'll need some bottles to fill up whenever you're leaving the valleys and you climb to see on the ridges where there's no water available. So what to carry for a multi-day? For a multi-day you're carrying a couple of extra things. So one thing is, is a mat. So you typically don't want to sleep on bare rocks or, or, or like wet underground if it rains. So you need kind of a mat. So I'll show you the type of mats we use in a sec. So then a sleeping bag is there. It's sometimes a bit costly, a good sleeping bag, like a compact like one. But most of the time, a light blanket will do only in the winter season, like say November uh, to February sometimes. If you go to higher altitude, say go like an old 2,000 meter, it's going to become very chill in the night. But like say Nagalapuram, maximum 800 meters. Throughout the year, mostly a blanket will do. You don't have to invest anything. Torch again on the campsite, 100 rupee, uh, what is it there, the brand like the guts. Everybody? I have an idea, 100 rupee torch is enough to, and it's very good, it works. It's an LED torch, works on AAA batteries, you can use it for 20 decks. Uh, it uses very little energy. Torch is important because, again, CPC, we normally, I mean, I would say a moderate, difficult track, we don't plan. 
we don't know the terrain always, so we go on a new trail and it's not always easy to assess it, to reach the campsite before it gets dark, so it's important to have your torch so that we can do a little bit of night trekking if, if needed. And again, next to the campsite you'll need a torch, definitely in the, in the night to cook and everything. So here again you can see some gears, uh, let's go to the next slide, we'll go one by one. This is a big no, this is, yeah, I shouldn't tell the brand, but I've seen people with this. This gives you big trouble because it's closed, right? It's fully enclosed. So if you step in the water, water nicely goes inside and stays inside for the next two days. So your food, your food is screaming then for the next two days um, as, you, as you get basically you get food bites. Uh, this particular brand also, I mean, this, they use a rubber which is very, very slippery. Uh, as you can see, the sole is like very thick, very heavy, so this is going to drag you down like anything. So this is a bad example, just to compare with the next slide, which is the... Okay, this is another kind of not good example, I guess. The good shoe. Good shoe in the sense that it's ventilated, right? You can see breathable mesh, right? It's pretty lightweight. But again, as I said, we don't follow trails, right? We go for rough terrain, so shoes are under a lot of stress. In this case, you can see some bata shoe, meaning nice shoe. I think it lasts for typically on an average five tracks. Then you have to throw it away because it's, it's not very uh, rigid. So here you can see like a nice trekking shoe. Again, nice because it's lightweight. It has a good sole, good grip. Uh, this is like a uh, vibrant sole, which is a little anti-slip. And most important people has to be breathable. Breathable is very important so that uh, your food can breathe in this hot climate. And that, especially on the streams, when 90% of the tracks happen, if it gets wet, you, it will quickly dry, so your feet remain comfortable, independent of the brand here shown. Next. Okay, the same shoe is actually shown, so no matter how good the shoe is, in CDC, <laughs> it will always be end of life. This is again a nice medal after some one, one year usage. Backpack, as I said, they to avoid big backpacks. Um, so you can either go for a branded backpack, so here we show some question. So many of the I mean, CTC guys will buy sleeping bags, good shoes, uh, backpacks from this shop in, in Bangalore. Backathlon is it's a beautiful outdoor shop, but you, know, you don't have anything like this in Chennai, unfortunately. Uh, so there are a lot of good stuff, a little more expensive sometimes. So I mean, if you're just a casual trekker, if you're not going to trek regularly, you can just buy a Livia bag in Roshan Pinagar for 718 rupees and you're also done, right? Main thing is, don't say, make, take more than 20, 30 liters. Don't come with these big backpacks which are going to drag you down. Uh, but what is a good backpack? A good backpack is again something that will have some breathability at the back. You're going to walk there for two days, you're going to sweat a lot. So it's going to become very sweaty here and it will become irri irritated if the backpack is pushing with 8 kilograms of luggage against your bike. It's going to become irritated, your bike is uh, full of ventilation, that's one thing. And secondly, which you cannot see here, is that a good backpack will just not be like a bag, but will also have some kind of support system, kind of a, a metal or a kind of a hard plastic piece here from this side to this side, that's going to put like, I don't know, 40-50% of the weight on your hip. So that not all the weight goes on the shoulder, but that you have a good support which transfers some of the weight of your luggage onto the hip, so that you're kind of distributing the weight. Next to... So here we are. Sleeping bag again. If you're a casual tracker, don't spend 2,000 rupees on a, on a good sleeping bag, just carry a blanket, which is most of the time okay. okay. I mean, blanket, I also prefer a blanket. In the pocket, okay. So, okay, most of the most of the year, lower altitudes. If you're not really in the winter season, a blanket is more than enough. I mean, that's one nice thing about South India that you can actually spend the night here sleeping under the stars. Sometimes you don't even need a blanket because the climate is very, very nice. So if, of course, you're a regular trekker, so if you want to go into the winter season, higher altitude, say, Balani Hills, then you can get a sleeping bag. Again, as usual, the overall package has to be light, so any item that we show here has to be light. Uh, here we have like a nice question sleeping bag, S15, 15 means it's, 
you will be comfortable even if the temperature drops still 15 degrees, which is most of the time it's not going to get colder than that. Here, it does fall it back. So, but again, same thing, it has to be compact, it has to be lightweight. So, I didn't bring a sleeping bag here, but this is like a pretty compact thing. So, not too big again. This basically is it's just 600 gram. Uh, again, many people who are new to this, they, they come with these big bag, uh, sleeping bags of, of 3 kilograms, bulky, put it in the backpack and the backpack is full already and you're just suffering for 2-3 days walking with that big backpack. Light, light, light is the, is the key. Next. Okay, the mat. So here we come to the mat. So sleeping mat, right? So, uh, but it's actually a multifunctional mat as you can see. So this is this thermocoil material which they use for isolation, typically in cores. On top of the roof of the core, you have this this uh, kind of material, which is basically it's, I think it's it's air which is trapped in bubbles, so it's like a very good isolator. Uh, so which makes it good as a sleeping mat. Also, you can go to any hardware shop for 80 rupees, get two meters of this uh, thermocoil sheet, and you can roll it up, carry it, and then spread it out, and you can sleep comfortably. You'll be protected from the dirt. You'll be protected from the wetness. You'll be protected mainly from the cold of the underground and uneven some insects. So it's a nice thing to sleep on an overnight break. And as you can see also, uh, given the fact that it's air bubbles, the air is light, so it floats on water. So putting a couple of these masks together will also be a useful uh, fatty actually to get our uh, backpacks across any pool or gorge. What is what? Thermocoil is the name, thermocoil mask. Thermal coil and because it's like thermal isolation material. You can get it in most hardware shops. Again, you don't have to spend like three, four hundred rupees and, and some specialized outdoor shop for a specialized map. This map will do for most of the purposes. Next, pens, pens. Uh, I remember in the early days of CTC when we used to go to Weimats and climb the valley in Valley Mala. 2,200 meters or something. We used to carry these tents. We used to rent them at BMC Bangalore. So tents, first of all, are very expensive. You will easily pay three, four thousand rupees for a two, three person tent. Ex expense the site. It's also heavy. A tent will easily be again three, four kilograms. This you can just imagine carrying just a tent uphill, 2,000 meter uphill, three kilograms on your shoulder. That's again like a suicide mission. So expensive, heavy. We don't want to use this. Most of the time we use this. You know what is this? Ah, and the tarpaulin sheets. So 200 rupees for, uh, what is it, 12 by 9 feet, which is enough to cover six people easily. So compact, lightweight, cheap. And hey, in the jungle you cut a couple of uh, branches, you use some ropes and you can, as I will show, this might be a little more interesting for the kids, we can show hey, how a tent is practically made. Uh, it's also very compact to carry, I mean, so here you can see, right, so as we, hey, we don't carry these sticks or anything, we just uh, settle down, you just need a flat space. So what you basically do is you hey, take a horizontal stick and on both sides of the stick you can use like a V-shape to put the stick through. You will typically use a third stick to make it stable, right, so you have a triangle here, so this thing will be stable. You will have a triangle on the other side, you will connect both with the horizontal uh, thing and then basically you put sort of tarpaulin sheets on top of that. Of course that's not enough because it will simply come down. Then you're going to attach a rope and some rock on like six points at least so that if there is heavy rain or there is pretty heavy wind with this kind of setup here, maybe this, this, you have some five kilogram rock here, tie the corners, it will nicely remain straight. So any water in the night that falls on this will be nicely kind of uh, drain to the sides of the tent so that people can sleep comfortable. It's airy underneath. Uh, that's all you need, I mean, good enough. Uh, as good as a five-star accommodation. Next. Food, sapadu. So what do we carry again? Lightweight, we carry these aluminium pots, which are very lightweight, 150 rupees for a big pot, 12 liter, where you can easily cook Maggi noodles or in the morning here make some porridge at the campsite say, for like 15 people, I would say. So next. So here you can, oh, this is interesting, just for your uh, kind of reference, this is like a typical three-day menu, what we carry. Some, some of you might ask, what do you guys workers carry? We carry food with us, I mean, we don't go hunting 
in the forest. I mean, we're not really survivors, I would say, but again, the forest officials might not like it. So this is the kind of food we can eat mostly, right? So it's, I mean, on CBC you will always have Maggi noodles in the evening, which will be very tasty after one day of, of walking in the jungle, sweating. You'll be hungry to have some soup and noodles in the evening. Uh, we carry some Snickers typically, very energetic peanuts and nice sugar to kind of energize yourself between the meals. Cornflakes are popular, right? Whatever is here again is the same thing, lightweight, compact, has to be preservable, right? We're getting some of this stuff, some, some of our effects are 9 days continuous. We don't make contact with the external world, so it has to be preserved. And of course, uh, high energy. You need enough energy to keep moving. So a couple of fruits in between, milk powder to make tea, to make corn flakes in the morning. Uh, cheese, cheese is a good one. It's very energetic cheese with bread or something. Um, Coconut puri is, is like a very good uh, breakfast. Uh, it's high sugar, so it's, it gives you like a good boost. Okay, so next one. Okay, navigation obviously. If you yeah. Are you sure the camphor and water? Yeah. So if you go back, we'll talk about it a bit later. Camphor. Okay, so camphor we carry is basically to start a fire. So most of the time, nine out of ten tricks, uh, it's again a tropical climate here. Not, we go do a lot of tricks in the eastern guys, there's not that much rain throughout the year, except for the monsoon. You can always find dry wood to uh, make a cooking stuff, make a campfire. But like over till December when it's sometimes wet, we need to carry canvas to kind of like cook something. Because once the wood in the forest gets soaked, there's no way you're gonna get it to burn. Uh, and neem oil, so in this case I guess we went to on a monsoon track, neem oil is basically protection against leech leeches. We'll talk about I'll show bloody pictures in a, in a few slides. Navigation, we'll talk about this in detail, how to navigate with compass and, and GPS. So here you can see a GPS, right? So either you carry